the beautiful golden glow in a street lights can add an amazing cinematic look to your images. But what to do when you are too early or too late and there are no street lights on? Well, in today's episode, I will show you how to add the glow into your street lights using Luminar Neo. Okay, so moving into Luminar Neo, where we are already in the catalog module, and we're gonna start by looking at our sample files. Now, as usual, if you wanna follow me along, all you need to do is to jump into the description of this video, follow the link there, download the sample files, and we can start. For today's episode, we have a three images or three elements. We have the photo itself, then we have a sky and this beautiful glow. Now, the project for today is to add glow into the lights, right? Into the street lights. Now, there are multiple different ways you can do this, but the technique I will show you today is the one I use all the time. Now, looking at the image, it's a lovely scene from Venice with the beautiful composition, the light, the water, the background. However, I think the sky can take a little bit of help and definitely by adding the glow into these street lights, we will add a little bit more of the cinematic effect. So if we're ready, let's grab the image and move it into the edit module. In the edit module, we're going to start by quick sky replacement. To do this, well, you know what to do. Jump into the main editing toolbar, into the landscape section, then sky AI tool, where first we need to choose the sky. Well, how to do that? Click on sky selection and make sure that you are on all skies. Once you do that, scroll all the way down until you see a little button with a plus sign. Click on it and in the next window, navigate towards the location of the sample files, select the sky and click on open. It will take a few seconds and the sky will load into the Luminar Neo and then it will also replace on the image. You can already see it. Once we do that, it's time to adjust it. Now to adjust it, we're going to start from the top and work our way down. So first sky orientation, where we're going to take the horizon position and just move it around to make sure that we cover the horizon. So let's have a look at it. Yep. Somewhere around here. After this, it's time for vertical position. So up or down, I think a little bit lower is a good start and horizontal position where first we need to see if we want to flip the sky or not. So if we flip it and then maybe move it, I think that will work well. Now, the reason why I like it this way is that when we look at the before, you kind of see that it follows a similar direction of the light and colors. So there's the blue here and on the original image as well. And there is the warmth here. So that kind of follows similar idea. So that's good. Now we're going to again adjust the vertical position and actually we're going to bring it down a little bit. I think somewhere around here. Looking at it, now you can see that there is a little bit of white glow around and to adjust this, we can close the sky orientation and open the mask refinement. Now looking at the image, it needs a little bit of extra global. And when we apply that, it will remove the white glow. It will also add a little bit of saturation here, but don't worry about it. We will fix that in a moment. So I think keep an eye on that somewhere around 88. And then with close gap, yeah, if we push it up a little bit, I think that will help us as well. Finally, with a little bit of extra fixed details. And that's about it. Now, how can we get reduce of the bottom here? Well, we'll do that in a moment. First, we close this, open a scene relighting. Let's have a look. Do we need to adjust a little bit of the relight? Mm, not so sure. I think we can leave it the way it is. Relight saturation, maybe just a little bit. Somewhere around 40. Finally, reflection. There isn't any. It will not really work on this form of water here. So let's not worry about it. Sky adjustment itself. We can defocus the sky, add grain, add a little bit of atmospheric haze if we would want to but we're not going to do that. We can make it a little warmer or brighter, but I think for me, this at the moment works quite well. The only thing we need to do is to remove a little bit of the saturation we have added. Have a look before and after. And to do this really simple into the masking, into brush and then brush into the erase in the erase. Let's just make the brush a little bit bigger and off we go one click and then just brush away the bottom part from the water itself. So this way, once we're done, it will remove the saturation there and we don't have to worry about it. We just have the new sky. Quick have a look before and after. 
and we good. We are good to go. So once done with this, we can close the Sky AI tool and we're going to do one more adjustment with the Sky. When you look at the sky, it's kind of warm and magenta. When you look at the rest of the image, it has that kind of green aqua tint and it's not warm enough. So to adjust this, quick jump into the develop tool. In the develop tool, first we need to apply a little bit of masking. So to do that, into the masking and into mask AI. So let's do that. Now the application will scan the image and while doing that, it will give us an option of automatic selections. What we're looking for is the sky, because when we select the sky, it will select the sky for us. And then we can very easily go back into the mask actions and invert it. So when I click on show, you can see that everything other than sky is selected. With this done, into the adjustments and into the color, where we can add touch of warmth, but more importantly, lots of tint. So somewhere around here. I'm thinking yeah, for the time being around 50. Finish with this, we can close the develop tool and it's finally time to turn attention towards our lights. Well, the first thing we need to do is to actually add the glow. Well, for, for this, we're gonna go into layers panel, click on the plus sign, click on load image and back to our sample files where we are gonna select the light overlay. Click on open and just like magic, it appears. Now we can click on it and it will appear here. Click on quick fill or fit just to make sure that you remove any distortion and now adjust the size. You can use the little white dots to do that. And after that, just navigate the new light into the position where you think it should be. Now there is actual light bulb there. So just position it over it, something like this. And that looks good. Then increase the opacity to 100 and change the blend mode from normal into the screen. So that's the first one. Then into the layers, right click on our <laughs> overlay and select duplicate layer. Grab the new overlay and position it into the second light. So somewhere around here. One more time, duplicate and again into the third light. So something like this. Well, since we already added, let's also switch on this light. So one more duplication <laughs> by right clicking on the layer, position it down. Zoom in a little bit with your mouse or command or control plus, make it much smaller and again, position it, run around where it should be. Now, that is not the perfect result. It's just about what you like. So adjust it the way you like, position it there and that's that. Now, looking back at the image, you can notice that some of the overlays and the glow, you can see the hard edge there, like on this one here and this one here. And this often happens when the background of the overlay has a high contrast or difference in light. Well, how can we adjust this? It's really simple. Let's just select the one on the top to start, zoom on it. And what we're going to do into the masking here, select the brush on erase with the strength. Well, let's start with 50% and the size. Well, again, somewhere around 124 here, one quick click <laughs> and we can just brush away these hard edges. So as you can see, it's mostly visible over the sky. So very gently just brush these areas away. Adjust the size of the brush. There you have it. Very simple. Then if you can still see it at the bottom, do the same. But for me, actually, this looks good. So it was mostly here. Now, moving on to the next slide, or the first slide, let's also select it in our layers panel. In the masking, brush, erase, the setting is the same. One click and just brush away the edge. So something like this, perfect. At the bottom, not so much. On the top, well, maybe somewhere around here. Yeah, that looks good. A little bit more here as well. Sometimes it's good to zoom out just to double check. So I think that is quite good. And then finally, uh, looking at the rest here, actually zooming in, I think the rest is good. Maybe let's do the third one as well. Yep, yeah. masking, brush, same settings. Let's just make sure that we don't have any of this here and everything looks good. So this is much better and perfect. With this done, let's just have a look at this first one one more time in the masking, brush and paint and actually add a little bit extra here. 
that's much better. But with this done, now we can select the overlay all the way on the top and hold shift and go all the way down to the image itself. So basically we are selecting four overlays and the main image. With that done, we can right click on it and select merge layers. Now the application will actually merge everything together and it will give us a chance to work on one image and apply global adjustments to it just to make it more believable and blend everything together. By the way, just before we're going to continue, a quick reminder that both the glow overlay and the sky are from our Luminar Neo Power Bundle. The Power Bundle is our most successful product ever with over 20,000 happy creative artists who are using it, who are using almost 1,000 premium elements that includes skies, overlays, textures, backgrounds, sky objects, working layers, LUTs and presets. If you want to grab it, then follow the link in the description of this video or find out more about it on our website at Clever Photographer. So we are ready. We have the new image on the top. We can select it or make sure that it's selected. And now we're going to move back to our main editing toolbar. First thing, we're going to enhance our lights. So into the creative section where we're going to open the magic light AI. This is a great tool that allows us to enhance any lights in the image. First thing we're going to do, increase the intensity and have a look at the result. Now, by default, it kind of switched on this light, this light and this light, but not the one on the top. So what I like to do into delete, make the brush bigger and actually delete whatever the application did. And we're going to add our own. So make the brush smaller, click on add, maybe zoom in a little bit. And I think around here, one click, just like that making sure that we are on add, then one click on the second, third, adjust the size of the brush again down to maybe about 20 and one more click at the light at the bottom. Now, if you do like this star effect on the lights, you're more than welcome to keep it there. But for me, I'm going to actually go into the settings, bring the beam width down and only thing I'm going to apply with this, I'm going to add a little bit of extra glow. So somewhere around 64. You can adjust some other options here, a little bit of clearness, brightness. Let's have a look, maybe a little bit of extra here. And that's about it. Quick look at the before and after. And even though the difference is subtle, it does look better. So let's have a look before and after. We are already doing much better. Now we're going to add a few extra touches. We're going to go into the mystical tool and apply a little bit of that mystical glow to make it even more dreamy. Then into the mood tool where we're going to apply LUT to the overall image just to blend it together. So click on choose LUT drop down box, then into the cinematic toning. And here, just go through, see what you like. If you follow me before, you know, I love the long beach or in a creative section, the candlelight. But for this one, I think we go for the long beach, apply that, close it. And we are almost finished. The only thing that it's missing is a little bit of vignette just to control the direction of the light. I would like a little bit of darker gradient at the bottom. So into the vignette, bring down the amount and then click on choose subject and just position the center of the vignette. Let's say somewhere around here. If you want, you can open the advanced settings and just add a little bit of inner light there. One more time, it's time to look at the before and after. What a difference, right? So this is how you switch on street lights. But how about if you would have a daylight photo and want to turn it completely into the night scene? It's actually quite easily doable in Luminar Neo and we have a full tutorial on how to do that right in a corner of your screen now. So don't stop here, continue learning. And the easiest way to do this is to follow us at our Clever Photographer YouTube channel, where we have a video tutorial for every single tool in the application and so much more. Folks, I hope to see you on the next video, where we're going to be learning how to turn image like this from day into the night.